Ko aia, uh, ko e nchi tangaru uh, hau no te taira whiti ko ai tētahi um, kaimahi o te TSI or Southern Initiative me tētahi kaimahi kai whakahari o te rōpū nei. Um, kia ora, mōrena everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to this space. Um, we're really, really looking forward to the conversation and, and to the learning space um, that we've, we've uh, curated for you. And just a welcome and um, to say I'm Angie Tangairi. I'm one of the social entrepreneurs at the Southern Initiative and, and a member of the um, organising team. And it's my privilege to open the space and to be a part of this awesome kōrero. Kira te whanau, um, ko inia ahau. Uh, ko Baruch Jacob tōku ingo, ingoa, um, ko e mahiana ahau to Open Cause Done Lab. So welcome everyone, it's really good to see you all here today. It's, um, there have been a lot of names, and now I'm actually seeing faces and it's actually quite special. You know, welcome all. Morena, um, Kali Ryan, aho. It's lovely to see you all today. And please drop a note to either Baruch or myself in chat if you get stuck, and we will do our best to help. Um, my name is Desna Fanga Shalom, I'm the, the uh, kai hautu of Nga Aho, the Māori Designers, National Māori Designers Rōpū. Um, and yeah, pleasure to be here today. I'm pretty excited about our journey that we've got ahead with us. So, um, no mai haere mai, and look forward to getting to know you all. Kia ora, Desna. And could I just ask people to introduce yourself in chat as you go, please? Just maybe your name, who you are, where you're from, what brings you here today. Um, but also, <coughs> here's this really flattering picture of me that Lee took, just to show you how to, you might want to change your name. We're asking people to rename yourself with the organization and your name, because when we put yourself, when we put you into groups, breakout rooms, We'd like to mix it up a little bit. So that's the only reason we're asking for organization. On this slide, you'll see how you can rename yourselves. Those of you know how to do it. Oh yeah, I see quite a few have done it already. And just some tips for Zoom. Keep yourself on mute unless you're speaking and can unmute as you speak. We'd love to have you keep your video on all the time. It just makes it much easier to connect but we do specifically ask that you put your video on in the breakout rooms because that's your smaller group. It's just easier to have a conversation. Um, if you want to change your view, there's a gallery view where you have everybody or quite a few people at least. And then there's the speaker view where it's just a person. And again, just use the chat to introduce yourself, ask questions, you can send Lee and myself uh, direct messages as well. And I will pass that back to Penny with that. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora, thank you, Barak. Are you happy to drive for me then? You can, I'll keep you on the screen, Sharon. You can, you can drive. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nā mahi nui ki a koutou katoa. Um, Nā mahi nui ki a, ko, ki, a, ki a koe, Angie. Thank you for opening for us and um, welcoming. It's... Um, really uh, lovely just to have all the faces here and to have you arrive here. I really appreciate that um, people are coming in from lots of different worlds and spaces and all of them are gonna be busy and high pressured and really appreciate that you're um, able to come together in this space with us. Um, I'm part of the Auckland Co-Design Lab and the Southern Initiative based in Monaco. Um, today I am in Tetatua Aria Kyoto, which is Three Kings. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that um, there's at least seven different um, iwi mana whenua that whakapapa to this area. It's a really dynamic area with amazing um, history and stories to tell, both in the land that's still here that we can see and in the land that we can't see anymore. So this space was Three Kings, there's only one left. Um, and there's the, the kind of story of that, um, those, the maunga that were here is spread out all across Tāmaki. So, um, and just acknowledge um, Tanga Te Whenua that are joining us and, and the stories and connections to place that will um, are kind of enabled through um, the generosity um, and the welcome that we have in these spaces. So 
um, and just ex extending that to, to this group as a learning space um, and to thanking all the team that have um, so far been part of putting this space together and now to this Rapu who are joining us this morning who are now part of that collective kind of sharing and storytelling that we're going to enter into together. I just want to provide um, a little bit of context for what we're hoping to do together over the next few weeks, um, what some of the background um, is for the, the kind of thinking of the way that we've structured the program. Uh, uh, but still to say that um, all of what we're doing is a learning journey and we're really open to feedback and conversation throughout. So just keep in touch with us as we're going. So the Southern Initiative and the Co-Design Lab, just quickly for context in terms of hosting this, our um, kind of space is around trying to support um, the things basically to, to, to operate in different ways. So we ultimately are looking for a new norms to be functioning. We wanna see different kinds of outcomes that come from different kinds of practices. And part of that is to support capability building in the public sector for working differently together. But that's really easy to say and actually quite challenging for us to collectively do. And so we're kind of into getting into the, um, the nitty gritty of working out together, what do we actually mean? We know what, when we talk about um, design for equity and intergenerational well-being, those are actually, they're really big words and quite big calls. Um, and we're certainly not going to feel the full extent of that in our time together, but we're definitely going to try and traverse some of the things that we've learned are important and create space for sharing between us around what we all collectively see as needing to be happening in Aotearoa. And I know that people are here because we've got a shared kaupapa around that, even though people are coming from different places and spaces and different experiences. So we're putting, um, wanting to share some of the things that we've been learning and learning with others about what we think working differently together means. We know that ways that we've been working in government have not got us to the places that we wanna go um, and that we do need different start points, not just different things. And it's important to acknowledge from my perspective anyway, that when we say what we've been doing so far is predominantly um, a toiwi approach to things. And, and so when we say, hey, we need to learn to be more holistic, we need to be more interconnected, that's largely about unlearning or unpacking ways that we've constructed in a, um, you know, as a legacy from ongoing colonization, structural racism, like that's the space that we're in when we're talking about equity and intergenerational well-being. And so some of the unlearning is actually a catching up as well. So um, the issues that kind of surround the topics of equity and intergenerational well-being are really big. Um, they're, I guess they're quite challenging. Um, it's not, it's not, just about tools and processes and methods, and it's not about quick fixes and solutions. And so when we talk about um, design, we're actually wanting to step back from saying, oh, here's some, here's some tools that are gonna somehow magically resolve things. We wanna step back and say, what's actually the foundations of the practice, the ways of being and thinking, values and principles led practice that creates the conditions for different ways of working and then we can start to understand what helps us to do that work so where we where we start and kind of try and position this conversation with you all is what are some of those foundational things that we actually want to learn about grow tap into and connect to that guide a different way of working together and the design is weaved into that um, and and so today we're sort of doing trying to do th three things together in this first touching base mm -hmm. session if you like one is simply just to connect and meet each other and do a bit of conversations together. And some of us on the team have already had the opportunity to introduce ourselves. You'll hear also from Roy Mata, but then we'll give space for you to introduce yourselves to each other too. Um, but in the first instance, jump in in the chat and do it, but there'll be different ways for you to connect over this time and in the coming weeks as well. So one of the first things for today is to connect. We wanna land in some of the kind of core concepts and, and context that we wanna work through together. And we also want to test the tech. So we're going to do a few different things to make sure, oh yeah, I couldn't get onto Slido or oh, I don't know how to do this. Hey, to play. We want to try that out today, surface the stuff. All of us are in government departments with all sorts of different restrictions. Sometimes you don't even know you can't do something until you jump on and do it. So we want to get all that stuff out. So if you get on and you're like, oh, this is all too hard technically, don't worry, that's part of what we want to do today. Bring that forward and then we can help resolve it over the next week or so. So those are our kind of three um, things that we're trying to do today. So 
what I was describing before about kind of our perspective on this mahi together, it sits behind these three modules. So it's not, it's not a um, one, two, three, how to do design. It's us trying to explore together some practices and ways of working that underpin all, everything that we do and all our work. So we're not as fo so focused on projects, we're focused on practices and how we actually be together and what it means for how we work and everything that we do. And that means the capacity that we have in all our roles to either be compounding inequity or promoting equity and having a real consciousness of that, that we're actually making decisions and actions every day that are either kind of leaning to one or the other. So we've developed this three module um, program, which we land in today. And then over the coming, um, I think it's five weeks, um, next week we work with Angie again and um, Te Whānau Whānui o Papakura. So the whānau that she's been working with in Papakura and hear about their experiences of um, working for transformation, really. And, and explore some core concepts. We also get some time with Tukona Teraki and their um, mahi um, and Otatahi Naitahu um, innovation um, work. And then we'll, we'll be working again in module, the kind of making with Desna and Roy Mata, who you're gonna hear from soon around working from transaction to transformation. What does it mean when we start thinking about all of the things that we're doing from a kind of transformational systems lens and the potential for change? And then in this, third week, we'll be joined by um, Debbie Goodwin, who's part of Tuakana Taina uh, Developmental Evaluation Collective, and we'll be looking at embedding learning practices, and what are we actually paying attention to when we're thinking about the complexity of systems change and the complexity of holding the bigger picture kind of in view, rather than just being focused on sort of tasks or projects or activities, which in some ways hold us in the status quo space. And I'll come back a bit at the end to what I mean about some of those things and we'll pick up next week more on this idea of well, what are we talking about when we're talking about complexity and systems and things like that. So just give a bit of background and overview of how the how the structure of these sessions are. Our hope is that even though everybody is incredibly busy in between these weeks, so between A, B and C there's there every two weeks with the hope that there's some opportunity to come together as a group even briefly in your teams outside of these sessions and do some reflection or at least just have some um, capacity to think about. We had those conversations on Thursday and Friday, how does that relate to our world? So our hope is that you can do some of that work in between, but we're also really realistic about how much time people have. So there's invitations to do that and suggestions, but we're not sort of expecting you necessarily to be able to complete everything that gets shared with you. There's stuff that we'll send an offer and you'll you'll tap into it as is useful for you and you may also want to share stuff back, and that's all totally awesome. So we have an awesome group together. It's quite a diverse group and that's a really key part of the program is ways that we can weave connections. Maybe that don't necessarily seem obvious straight away. We've got people from council, from police, from DIA, from NZQA, from DOC, from MSD, um, Oranga Tamariki. So there's a whole amazing collection of people working in different spaces and the power of that connectivity between um, this group is, a, is actually a really important part of this journey for us. So we create as much room as we can for you to connect with each other and start building your own shared language and practice around this work and make connections between the work. So hopefully by the end of it, you've, you've weaved um, quite a strong network as well, potentially across the country, as well as across agencies. Um, and, and in that people are gonna bring lots of different experience and perspectives and we'll create as much room as we can for sharing around those. And if you jump to the next slide, Brooke. So just really quickly, we land today. Roy's gonna to take us on a bit of a journey. She's gonna share with us into a story and then there'll be an opportunity for connecting in to where you each are, where each of you are and connecting with each other and then some of the foundations of the practice and setting us up for the next couple of weeks. It's the sort of the shape of today with a real emphasis on where we are, who we are and how we work matters. And that's where we wanna kind of start is where are we now? Um, and the next slide. So there's just a few words that I wanna share. People will have different 
things that they they want to shape the space with but I just want to kind of make some suggestions about words that we've found useful for thinking about how we want to be in these spaces and one of them is just a half shade braver sometimes that might be all it takes within a public service setting for us to do something actually quite different it's just a half shade braver um, and Lee can provide the source of where that quote comes from other is um, generosity and frugality. So I need to watch myself because I've probably been talking too long now. Um, to be generous in what you share, but also frugal in the sense that you want space for others as well. So when you're in those smaller groups, just have that balance between feeling like it's a place that you can share, but also that you want to hear from others. As Angie mentioned, this is an up or space. We want to create space for exchange and learning. We're on this journey together. We're sharing what's emerging in our world and hoping to connect with what's emerging in yours. That, that openness and reflective um, kind of take on it. If, if stuff's too much or it doesn't make sense or it doesn't sit right, just, just let it come and we'll, we'll look at ways that we can connect to it and work through it together. There will be different ways of seeing, different ways of thinking and different experiences. Um, and that's a really important part of this and creating space for that too. And lastly, if it feels uncomfortable, often that's a good thing. We're not learning without stretching. If it's uncomfortable because you haven't got your chair set up right and you need to stand up or your legs hurt, then do that, deal with that kind of discomfort. Um, and But from a kind of like, oh, I'm feeling stretched or I'm not quite sitting with this, probably that means that we're in a space that is, is a good learning space for us. So I just want to do one more thing before I hand over to Roy and just invite people, and this is one of our, it is a check-in and it's also a test for us, for everybody just to do a one-word check-in. So in the chat, you will see a link to Slido. And Slido is one of the places that we'll use. It's great to help us gather. You know, if we've got 50 people on the call, how do we have a kind of collective brain space? The chat can get quite hard to track. So Slido is a good sideline tool for us. So if you see a link in the um, chat right now, I'll just check that it's there. It must be coming. Um, there'll be a link to a Slido in a minute. And we just want you to do a one word check in. Okay. So I can see the results coming in now. We've, we've got lighter, curious, excited, happy, tired, frustrated, good, intrigued, supported, refreshed, awesome, hirikoa, sleepy, excited, hirikoa, hopeful, exhausted, ambivertish, oh, I don't know that word, ambivertish, um, curious, curious, anxious, anticipation. There's a few people that are feeling tired and I'm really glad that it's Friday morning. <laughs> and we'll do our best to like make this um, uh, an energizing rather than um, the opposite of that um, for your, to carry you through the rest of your day today. So some, some, some lovely different words here and we'll drop that in, in the word cloud so we can share that again later. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand over to um, Roy Mata, who's going to just help us kind of land in the split space of thinking about the, the work that we're doing, the ways of thinking and feeling that we wanna tap into and cultivate and kind of grow and allow space for in this work of complexity, in this work of change. So she's just gonna help us land by sharing some pokaro, some matauranga with us that can help tune us in, perhaps be a guide um, for today, for the rest of this time, but also perhaps just in, in your other mahi. So I'm gonna hand over to Roy now. Nga huri nga tai ki matai, tai o wai tato e. E tu ana au ki te tihi tapu o pirongi a maunga, te tiro whakararo ki ngā wai kori kori po o wai pa. E hoi nei, taku waka, ko tai nui. Kei ngā kōruru, ngā pau, ngā maihi, te whare maire. Kūrekire ki marae e tau ana ki raro i te maru o mani apoto, ko ngā tia pakura tērā. My name is Rui Mata. Um, I, my whanau hail from Waikato under the beautiful and a little bit chilly uh, Pirongia Mountain. 
I work um, inside of Tamariki Wellbeing, which is it's part of the TSI, so I get to be part of this awesome team. <laughs> I've been given the opportunity to introduce you to Hautu Waka. It's, it is a knowledge base of wayfinding our tūpuna used for navigation and exploring unknown spaces. Hautu Waka helps us connect to how our tūpuna work their way through complexity whilst also leaning into challenging situations in their navigation journey. Hotu Waka is a knowledge system that is founded in attunement to everything in and around you. And it's also founded in tohu sighting or mapping. Now in our context, Hotu Waka can help guide us through, or can guide us in navigating through complexity, but not just in our mahi, in all aspects of our lives. Hotu Waka is made up of five phases of practice. Now, before we delve in, I want to invite you to imagine with me. Imagine on the shore, and in front of you is a double hulled canoe, or waka haurua. In this waka are people, whānau, hand selected by you to take this journey at your side. These are people who come with their own skill sets and worldviews, ways of seeing the world differently to the way you see. Now it's time to set off. Your kaihoi, who are your paddlers, they power you forward into te moana nui a tangaroa. Your kaiurungi, who is your steerer, guides your waka from te kei, the back of the canoe. Your kaihotu, who is your saita, stands at the ihu, the front of your canoe, watching and waiting. But what are they watching for? They're looking for tohu, signs, markers, anything that will present itself in its time. This could be a hauruhi, a gentle wind, or it could be a taipanaki, a current seen just beyond the shore. But for now, in this journey, tohu aren't revealing it themselves. At the beginning of our journey, tohu just aren't showing up. So you paddle, you paddle, and you paddle. This leads us into our first phase, te rapunga. In te rapunga, things are unclear. We know we want to get somewhere, but how we get there is unknown. This time, this is a time of watching and waiting. It can be challenging and often feel frustrating and anxious because you're already on your journey and you just want to get to wherever you want to go. But instead, you're left circling and circling and circling and feeling aimless. But it's in this phase that you ask your whānau, those that you've put on your board, on your waka, to connect and to attune with the environment in the way that they are most skilled, to employ their senses. And finally, in employing their senses, someone notices something, something you never saw. Te kitenga. This is a sighting. Oh, that's not te kitenga. Now it is. Amidst the size of relief that something has finally shown itself, that tohu has finally emerged, people are also looking, other people are also looking at the environment. They're looking and they're searching. They're using their own expertise in their own lens and a sighting tohu that again didn't show themselves to you because you can't see them the way that they can. But these tohu are leading in different directions. Now what do you do? Do you follow the single bird, the, the first tohu that you see, or do you go after the tiny little ripple of water further out to sea? You know, all of those potential have, uh, all of those tohu have the potential to lead you somewhere, but you aren't sure whether they will lead you and land you where you need to be. So you select, you select the people that you've put on board to go and take a closer look. Defying her. This is an exploring time. It's an exploring phase, a time where you are discovering and learning. 
literally testing the waters, looking for more tohu beyond what is already fatted. One of these tohu could lead, could lead you closer to your destination, or it could take you back into the beginning, back into te rapunga, searching and awaiting. Those you, the, the whanau that you set out, they return back to the waka and they report their findings. Now, you're trusting in their knowledge and using the collective expertise that you've gathered around you on board to decide what is the best course. Once a decision is made, you and your crew, you're off. You cast off toward the tohu that shows the most promise. Te whiwhinga. Your journey is getting a bit clearer now. The tohu you followed has led you to another tohu, and then another tohu, and then another tohu. And as the tohu are emerging, you are taking note, committing to memory the tohu you followed, which helped you on your way. Um, this require, but this requires you to be a bit more focused and a bit more present because you've been on your journey for a while now and you're getting tired. Your tohu are clear and they're showing, your, they're showing themselves. And you can see the destination, you're just not there. It's in this phase that you have to remember to stay strong, to persevere, because soon you will land. Te rawinga. Upon landing, acknowledging the tohu, when you land, acknowledging the tohu and the people that helped you get to your destination is crucial at this point. Sharing the story of your journey and the tohu you followed is important because your journey into the unknown is now a map. The tohu that you noticed becomes part of that map, a guide for others to follow and use. So you give them your map to them and they take it and then they make their own map, a different version of the one that you created. So let's bring this back to the present. Do you recognize these phases in your mahi or in your journey? Are you, are you, or have you ever been in one or all of them? Te rapunga, which is your searching, where things are unclear, you're waiting and you're watching. Te kitinga, the sighting of tohu, but you're not too sure whether it's the right one to follow. Te whainga, you're exploring, discovering, and learning. And will the tohu get you closer to your destination? Or will the tohu lead you into a different direction and start your journey all over again in te rapunga? Te whiwhinga, things are getting clearer and tohu are popping up. You're nearly there. You just have to maintain your waka, always keeping mindful that at any time with any tohu, the closer you get, you could actually end up pivoting and go back into te whainga or even back into te rapunga. Te rawinga, the landing. You've got your destination and you've created a map for others to follow in your footsteps and create your, to, so that they can go and create their own journey guided by the mahi that you did. That's how to waka. I hope these tools our tūpuna used can be used by you in whichever walk of life you're in. Ko te arahau tēnei, kia toka te manawa o te rangietu nei. Kia toka, kia toka. Kia ora. Kia ora, Roy, thank you. So I'm just going to stop for just 30 seconds and, and um, pause for that minute for people just to process some of the words and descriptions and feelings um, that, that Roy shared there. And that question around whether you recognize any of those in your mahi, whether you recognize feeling um, or going through any of that. So I'm just going to pause for 30 seconds while I let people process. Cool. So there's there's um, feelings and experiences and knowledge and what Roy shared. Thank you very much, Roy, for starting us there. That felt like for us, we could start in many places, but starting with that um, 
offer of a, of a way of thinking and being in their existing knowledge system to kind of just ease us in to the types of skills and mindsets and practices and also the, um, the intensity of the type of work and change that we're talking about when we start thinking about equity and intergenerational well-being. So thank you, Roy, for just laying some foundational thinking for us about what this actually might mean to practice in this way. Um, and for me, the descriptions that she shared um, and the language is a much more helpful way of thinking about how work feels sometimes or what it actually feels to work in this space than really clear models or processes or methodologies that kind of make things look like you'll simply go from one place to another place. There's a lot more about feeling and sensing and awareness and responsiveness to all the things that are going on, whether they be what's happening in yourself, your team, politically, um, in your agency. There's so many things that are happening in that space around you, both immediately in front of you and in the bigger kind of scheme of things in which we're working and really tuning our kind of senses and sensibilities into all that and being responsive to that and relying on different folks in our, in our um, teams and wider spaces that can help us navigate that. So now we just want to come back to, to each of you and where you folks are in your space. So we've had an opportunity just to do a little bit of um, kind of framing and we'll, we'll keep coming back to, um, to the intent and, and the work and, and what else we're going to um, kind of move into together. But we want to stop now and give the opportunity for you to kind of land in your place and connect with each other a little bit. Um, and um, starting where you are right now, is kind of the best place to start. So wherever your feet are on the ground, um, presumably everyone's in Aotearoa somewhere, um, is where we want to start today. So we just want you to take a couple of minutes to land yourself. We'd really like it. I'm really hoping that everybody has a window somewhere close. Um, if, it, if it genuinely takes you to leave the building to get outside, then maybe use your imagination. But if you are somewhere where you can take yourself within, you know, a huge radius to see outside we'd really like you to go do that so if you can take it's 10 if you can come back here at 10 15 so in three minutes but just go and take a minute or two to look outside where you are and that might not be where you're normally based you could be traveling you could be um in the city or at home but just to observe where you are right now today and just take a few moments to look out the window what do you see? What do you hear? What do you notice? And that sound, I know that's something actually we don't do very often. So if you feel odd and people are like, what are you doing staring out the window? You can just say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking or whatever. But just try and hold yourself in that just for a couple of minutes, even though your mind will immediately go to what you'd need to do next or later or the weekend and just come back to what you observe outside. So if you just take a couple of minutes to do that and then we'll come back here at 10, 15. And then we're going to have some smaller conversations with each other. So just allow yourself two minutes, two and a half minutes, just to look out the window and think about what you see and what you notice. Kia ora.
Cool. So as you come back, if you can turn your screen on so that we know that um, you're back and then later on you can turn it back off again if you like. But as you return, if you can put your video on and then we know that you're back. I should have said that before. Awesome. So if you can turn the video, your video on when you come back in and then we know that you're here. I um, I thought there's a small risk of asking people to walk away, see if, <laughs> see if people might get caught up making coffee or in the tea room, but I think most people have um, managed to find their way back. Um, awesome. So what we want to do now is just give you a chance to connect and say hello with some other people um, that are in this gopu. It'll be eight or 10 minutes or so. Just feel free to introduce yourselves however you would like to do that, um, to connect to each other, and then um, any observations you want to share about either um, just what you saw, where you are, or um, or the Fukaro that um, Roy shared. Just, just take the opportunity to connect and say hello and share something about where you are. And then we'll see you back here in about eight or 10 minutes. And Baruch will do the magic thing where we disappear off into a virtual room. Just pop out if there's any issues or jump in the chat and let us know if there's any issues. Welcome back everyone. Um, but hopefully you got a bit of time. It was, I know, probably quite fast just to say hi and connect in to some folks. You'll get to connect with those same folks again and others um, a little bit later on. What we'd like to do now is just move into um, the next kind of phase of that. So um, building more of a co-waitato space. So who are we together? It's quite hard to do that on the Zoom, right? So we're trying out different techniques of trying to make it so that we can see each other <laughs> and kind of get to know each other and know who's there. And then over time, you'll be able to build on those connections. And at the same time, utilize some of the online tools um, that, that can help us to do that sort of connecting. And like I say, if it, if it doesn't work, Cool. we'll sort it out over the next week or so, but this is a good time for us to just try and get in there and do stuff. Some of you might be wizards on Miro and have used it heaps, which is all we're going to use now. Um, and if this is your first time, that's fine. Lee's going to give us some intro on how to use it. But we're going to basically create a virtual kind of space to see everybody because you actually can't fit all our um, beautiful faces on one screen and Zoom unless you, I don't know, maybe you can if you've got a giant rugby sized screen. But um, so this way we can kind of see each other um, or parts of each other in the Miro board. Um, and so I'm just going to switch slides, but I think we'll, um, Lee's just going to talk us through some of the tech and I'll hand it over to you now, Lee. Sure. So we're just going to try and get everybody on Miro. Some of you will... Be, I don't know, Penny, if you can share that screen. I think you're sharing screen. Oh, yeah, here we go. So, most some of you will be comfortable, but we'll just do like the airline safety briefing announcement that just says a few things so back in the day when we used to get on planes. So, when in a moment, we'll put a link and you'll click on it. And if you go to the browser, it will say, do you want to go to the app? We suggest you don't go to the app, that you stay in the browser because that will be easier. And it'll look a little bit like this. There'll be a whole set of, you can see some groups on the right-hand side. That is where you will be um, in your groups from your organization. And on the left-hand side, there's some um, instructions about what you need to know. And then Penny, if you go to the next slide, that just shows you what are we gonna be doing? You're gonna find yourself, um, and I've helpfully put up Baruch's example, where you're gonna find yourself You'll say something about yourself. There'll be post-its to the side or you can click on the post-it and some questions that you're holding. And maybe if you've brought an image along, you can do that as well. I'll just now um, show you what that will look like. Let me just see. 
So it looks like this, and you'll notice that oh, you come onto a section, you'll need to zoom in and zoom out. So the things we need to tell you is up here, you'll see a little cute smiley face. And over there, there's a cursor. You can show collaborators screen, um, cursors, or you can hide. We suggest hide because seeing 60 cursors is slightly disorienting. Over here is the settings, and that's where you can go to navigation mode, and we suggest you use a mouse. And if I move my mouse in and out, I can zoom in or out. Um, and the instructions, and I then I'm going to scroll over, and you see you can find yourself, and you scroll in, and then you can, um, and, and that's the menu over to that side. This is how you upload or um, find an image search, or you can create your own sticky note and double click it to start typing. So I'll ask Baruch to put the, the link to the Miro board on there. Um, we're going to do that for the next 10 minutes, then we'll have a break. And Baruch and I are here, our main job is to support everyone to get onto the board because it's the only place where we can all talk and all get to. Sing out, um, we'll be here on the break and at the end of the session because we really want to make sure that we can all use the tech and see each other. Coming back into the foundations of what this work is and landing in thinking around ways of being and how we act and who we are in this space as kind of primary um, and as before thinking about methods or processes or tools so that kind of bigger picture on what's actually going on and how we hold on to the complexity of the bigger picture while we're taking action in every day um, and I think that's can be some of the biggest challenge is to hold all the different components um, that are going on and still be able to sense make and take action and feel like you're moving forward inside some really complex um, challenges. And um, so there's lots of different ways that you could tackle this and you could unpack it and talk about it. And we're, we're going to do a little bit more next week of kind of unpacking some of the ways that we've used to frame ideas around equity and intergenerational wellbeing and th things that are helpful for us. Where we're gonna start with is um, this is called a star. Uh, there's, like I said, there's lots of places we could start. We've drawn together five things that we think help cue us into the spaces and questions and thinking that we need to be kind of alive to and aware of in the context of equity and intergenerational well-being. Um, and these things help, these things are kind of the bigger picture that we need to be thinking about and processing while we're in, in a much more sort of um, smaller scale or, you know, in the practice of our everyday work. Uh, and each of these is a discipline on their own. So you could do an entire kind of um, program, master's, PhD in, in, in any one of these spaces, but we will just move through them in different ways over the next five or six weeks. Um, and work on them together. And different teams will be in different places around these um, kind of domain areas that are completely intersecting. Um, and they, they definitely require us to kind of be prepared to be challenged in ourselves, in our work and in our organizations. And so, you know, equity, how we acknowledge and seek to rebalance. Um, well-being and the, the diversity of understanding of what well-being is through different worldviews, but how we also support that and prioritize that. Obviously, tertiary at the center for us in terms of a foundational way of thinking about practice and being, um, and what that actually means for us to, um, to practice in a treaty-based way, I think is um, definitely for us something that we're, we're absolutely learning about, as opposed to we've got the answer, we know exactly what that looks like. Um, holding a holistic and systems view around practice. So what does that actually mean to be able to look at the bigger picture and the interconnectivity of all these different factors that influence well-being for people, past, present, and future, um, and then still um, operationalize that in our, in our activity and our workplaces. 
and then learning as a, um, a, a an orientation to learning in our work because the, the kinds of spaces that we want to get to and the kinds of ways that we want to practice um, in terms of participatory and um, you know learning and working together um, require us actually to build some quite significant different capability and capacity um, and it's not just a tomorrow we're going to start working differently there's kind of a learning together into a new space of working that we need to prime ourselves for um, in the in the conversation of this work connects quite um, I think specific well in a timely way with the sorts of things that are trying to be achieved through the Public Service Act and what it means to actually play an enabling role as government for communities, what it means to be in partnership, what it means to be more responsive, what it means to be a learning system. We've got some really bold and I think ambitious and fantastic places that we want to get to, but there's a lot of working together to kind of build ourselves and our organizations in a way that actually will be able to support those outcomes. So these are, we've just drawn these five things together as kind of foundations for thinking about our practice and how these show up. And the, the question that we kind of ask um, teams to consider is, you know, how well does our work allow us to engage in these quite complex but powerful and significant concepts in, in our everyday practice? How do they show up? How well are we supported and enabled to think about these things and be cued to decisions of, of, of things like equity in our everyday decision making and planning and practice, regardless of where we are in the public service sector system? And so um, we just want to start today with exploring one of the dimensions each. So in the group, um, being able to, to start to unpack, well, what does this even mean in our work? How does it show up in our worlds and our work? And so there are some questions that are attached to each of these. They're just prompting questions. And you'll get at the end of today's session a little pack in the email that has these in them. So you can come back to them, you can explore them, you can think about, or how you, maybe in our world, we would have different things here, we would use different words, we'd have different questions, but we'll share this um, in a, in a um, sort of follow-up pack that comes out after this session. For those of you that have already received, there's a set of things coming in the mail, some hard copies for people, you may have already seen this if it's already arrived to you. But these are questions that just help us try and attune to how these things are showing up. So today we just want to have a, a begin to kind of immerse in some of these things. And so the groups that you were in earlier, you'll now go back into the same groups, fingers crossed the tech thing happens in the right way. Um, and you'll just have one of these areas to think about hmm, how, how does this, how do we grapple with this in our work? And for some people, they'll be able to talk to that really easily. And for some people, it'll need a bit of unpacking and thinking, well, what does it actually mean? And are we are we kind of doing that already? So am I rightly that the process for this is each group's going to be given, you'll be randomly assigned one of these domains as your kind of area to talk about, and one of the questions just to use as a prompt. And it may be that you want to jump straight in there, you might want to take a minute to just process and think about it a bit more, and you might, or you might just want to unpack the concept as a group together a little bit before you start thinking about how it shows up in your own worlds and workplaces. Um, so, yep. Everyone, if you look in chat, each of you was in a breakout room which has a number. Um, and when you go back, I think Brooke had you've renamed them. So if you were in breakout room one, you'll have equity, which you see in the chat, which is how well does our practice and our work structures acknowledge the impacts and structural causes of inequity. It sits in the domain of equity. If you're in group two. Um, well-being, how does our work prioritise and, and value conditions? So that's there in the chat. So And you'll be able to see your room number and you, you do the question with the room number. So you'll go into your groups, you'll have about, what's the time? Let's say 10, maybe 15 minutes, just to reconnect with each other and just pick up on one of these and say, okay, as as a in our workplaces in our practice at the moment how does this show up how how well are we able to engage in this and start to unpack it together a bit again probably felt quite short hopefully though there was just time to start to kind of unpack some of the thoughts and to connect with each other around how these things are in your spaces 
And as I said, at the end of today, we will send out a little email that has some things that you can use to hold some conversations with your team, um, or even just to act as a reference to come back to at different times. And one of them um, involves the, the, um, the foundation star, which just has those questions with it. So you can come back to that and, and we'll also be sharing the slides, obviously, as well. So if it just felt like you're, um, only got to get your head around, you know, the first word, case by, there's um, time just to keep coming back to these things and unpacking them in the different ways and lenses that people are experiencing them and seeing them. And um, it is Friday, so there's only so much you can do on a Friday morning, and we're about, I'd say, to hit maximum cognitive capacity at about 11.30, which is why we always do these in the morning, so I really hope we haven't um, used up everything that you have for the day, and you can still get through the rest of your day okay. Um, but conscious of time and just wanting to um, make sure that we um, are wrapping up exactly when we said we would. And what Baruch is going to do now, I'm just, I will share a little bit about what's coming next week and just remind us um, what's there. But we would really be interested just to see, we kind of, um, we've managed to grapple with a few of the tech things, which is awesome. We have connected a little bit with each other and just started to kind of land into some of the things that we might be connecting with and hear from each other. Really interested just to know what um, has kind of come up for you or questions that you're sitting with, um, either that you brought into the session or that have come up as, as part of um, today's session. So there's a Slido link in the chat, if you could click on that. Um, and there's a question there for everyone to just, drop some thoughts and responses into. And that's really helpful for us to think about what do we take into next week. So some thoughts or questions from your conversation today that you're sitting with. So it could be a comment or it could be a question or anything like that. So if you wanna drop that into Slido, I'll just give everyone a couple of minutes so that we're not trying to multitask. Brooke, you can place some sound. Oh no, you can't play sounds because I'm screen sharing. We haven't figured out how to resolve that yet. Um, so just take a minute or two to think about the couple of hours we've spent together, what's sitting in your um, thoughts for today. And we'll be able to start seeing what some of our collective kind of calls. So some of the things coming up. Uh, how do we share it between different groups? We're all at different levels. So how do we make sure that we're supporting each other? How to manage silos. Yeah, cool. People appreciated connecting with each other, hearing from different organizations, experiencing the same issues. How do we dive deeper? Yes, scratching at the surface level, but actually what's underneath that? There's some actually really hard work to be done. Really appreciate that noticing and we'll do our best to do what we can together in this time frame to sort of dig in more deeply. People appreciating being able to connect to each other and mapping shared experiences. how to spend some time talking about the challenges that we share across different organizations. Yeah, how we support ourselves in this work. Awesome. Yeah, awesome Fakato from Roy Mata. So there's some really great stuff here and we'll share these collective um, reflections together as a group. So when we kind of package this up and share it out, you'll be able to see, uh, and if it makes sense too, we'll do a bit of synthesis around that, but this sort of collective um, learning and thinking that we're doing, will build that into what gets shared back out to the group. So you can kind of see where other people are at, what's working for them. And um, as the questions emerge, what people might want to be working on or connecting around together. So I'll just, 
wait one more minute for any other thoughts that are coming through there. Cool. Awesome. So people might keep dropping in. I'm just going to take us and just give you a heads up for next week. Um, just again, wanting to say thank you so much to Roy Mata and to the team that's working in the background behind the scenes to get all the bits and pieces together um, and to stitch the technology up, which you know, most of the time we got there and then there are a few random little moments there. But um, luckily, we're, we're also flexible and expert in this stuff now after the last year, hey, that we kind of get there and work with it. So um, appreciate it for us. Um, not being face to face, not being kanohi, obviously there's stuff we can't do, you know, there's things that we can't feel with each other, um, but the opportunity also to connect across Aotearoa through, through the diversity, we would never be able to get this combination of groups together, um, so there's real powerful things about coming together online, even though there's also, you know, things that we can't do and downsides to it too, so we just try and maximize what we can get out of this online forum in terms of that connectivity and being able to people can be in their own space and jump out and do stuff so that was a trade-off for us about do we come try and come together in one place which was is then excludes a bunch of people or do we try and hold an online space together where we can actually connect in much more diversity than we would be able to otherwise so um we can all like help each other out with the online aspect of things so as i said um there there is uh stuff coming out to you probably at the end of today. Um, next week's obviously gonna come around really quickly because we meet again next Thursday, which is a very short time frame. But after that, it's there's a um, two weeks between each one just to give a bit of space to unpack, connect, and obviously do the mahi that you're doing. Uh, next week, we'll, we'll be seeing Angie again and um, the amazing Tufano, um, oh, that doesn't, that's not all right. Tufano Fanu or Pukura that will be joining us as well to share their experiences of the work and of working in um, Tikanga led practice. There's a, a, a focus on um, values as actually, values and principles as being our grounding, one of our grounding kind of tools and ways of being in this work. And so the invitation and in the, in the pack that will come out to you today is around reflecting on how values show up in your work now. But also we'll be hearing from Tukune Tiraki, the team um, from Naitahu around their mahi. And that's also very much around um, values led practice and how they're guided in their own um, innovation work through their lenses and stories and and then we'll, we'll have the pleasure of connecting back up with Roy Mata again in module B and um, hearing more from her experiences and work and also with Desna as well we'll be able um, to learn more about the placemaking practice and the um, kind of expertise and world of Nga Aho and their mahi um, in session B and then ending we end with the stuff about learning but we're trying to weave that all the way through and you'll see in the pack that comes out this afternoon one of the things is a reflection tool and so whoops I'm going to go to this one so the three things that you'll see in the prep pack are these three things the foundation star that we already started to kind of explore some questions around values and like I say there's no expectation that you've um, spent hours on this between next now and next Thursday because I understand that it's only three days but it's there for you to kind of look at and reflect on and come back to what we would really encourage is that in your teams you set up some kind of capacity to do a check-in and build in if you don't already have it in your daily work now a, a reflective practice time so, so lots of the teams that did this mahi last year have continued this practice on and it was one of the things they adopted out of this work was creating space in your incredibly busy lives to just stop and go, what are we doing? What are we noticing about what we're doing? And what does that tell us about what else we should be doing or what we should be doing differently? And if we don't have that time to do those loops back and reflect on the work, it's incredibly different, to observe, difficult to kind of create the space for changing practice or noticing what's happening. So we really encourage out of anything to try and create that as a rhythm or a pattern in your team in some way, some nature of a moment where you can come together as a team and just go, well, what did we do? And actually, what do we what do we learn about what we just did? Was it was it helpful for us? Is there something in here that we can take on to our next practice? And so there's just some prompts that you may want to pick up and use if you're not already um, doing that in your work. So those are the things that will come out each time we meet, there'll be another 
set of um, kind of prompts or tools that you can just use to take back to your team or just anchor some of the conversations we've had. And there is a um, there is a like a tools and resources page that's shared and it's editable. So if you've got awesome stuff that you want to share back into the group, feel free to put it up there or um, share it with each other and we can kind of build out that um, tool set. So, and then there may be, there is some hard copies of things coming out in the post. So if something randomly turns up, then that's what um, that will be. And you can, if you, do, if you don't get a hard copy, we'll send you one. If you'd still like one, they've, they've gone out to the team leads and some of the individuals. So that is us for today. Um, hopefully you've got five minutes between now and your next meeting. What we'll try and do next time is finish not at 11, 29 or 11.30 but 11.25 so that you've got a little window so apologies for taking us right to the edge of that time frame. Um, any, any questions, any issues, anything just get in touch with us. Um, we really want to make this the most useful um, and kind of I guess not uh, um, generative restorative experience <laughs> for you guys and um, so for us to finish I will hand back to Angie, who opened for us to close our session for today. Kia ora, Thank you so much for your time.